So here we have Carlos Diaz, a young man from Tepozlan, Mexico, who claims to be in contact with extraterrestrials or beings of light. And what's so interesting about his case is his evidence. His photos are some of the most high quality, up close photos and videos of UFOs that's ever been taken. So close, in fact, that a lot of people think they're hoaxes. And there's a big debate between the supporters and the detractors of the Carlos Diaz case. But what's even more interesting than these photos are the videos that Carlos Diaz has taken. The videos are just the best you could possibly get. Some of the best you could possibly imagine. So good that you're probably going to think they're fake. That's what I thought at first. But let's take a look and try to analyze some of his videos. So let's start with this UFO video. Um, it appears to be shining a laser down to the ground. This was the first one that stuck out to me as, oh, this might be, this is probably fake because this is too good to be true. But the more we analyze it, the more we see that there's something not quite right with it, as in it's not so easy to debunk as everyone thinks it is. So let's start with the laser. Now I do have a pause on free, freeze frames here for a couple seconds so we can kind of go over the details of it. What's interesting to note is if you look, the laser is starting from the ground to the craft. Which, if this was fake, it would be coming from the craft down to the ground. Now, that's what you would think. But, I mean, look at this. It comes from, like, a bolt of lightning coming from the ground to the craft. It, and the fact that it's not, it hasn't reached the craft yet. It's almost going slower than, the light, than light speed, which is really interesting. And the fact that at the bottom of the laser is wider than the top of the laser. When the, the part that's coming from the craft is smaller <clears throat> and as it gets down it expands that's how it should but the brightness is starting from the bottom and heading its way up to the craft so how is that possible i mean with the way our physics work and our understanding of light and energy it that shouldn't be it should be the complete opposite but i suppose with an extraterrestrial craft something like that is possible you can see the brightness is coming starts from the bottom of the laser and works its way up to the top and it starts at the bottom up to the top but the the point where the laser starts to expand is going from the craft down to the ground it's like the complete opposite of what you would expect a laser beam to do especially because this was taken back in the early 90s which I don't even think people had lasers back then now what's good about this piece of footage that was taken back in 1993 is that it actually has some objects in the foreground, something in front of the UFO that allows us to actually measure it. And so the investigator here, Michael Hesseman, uh, was like, well, if this is real, take me to the spot. And so Carlos did. He took him to the exact spot with the exact tree that he filmed this in front of. And what he's saying here is that at first the UFO was over his head and then it flew over to behind the tree. And so Carlos got in position to where he could have the tree in front of the craft and so he could see it in the foreground of it and you had something to compare it to and then as they went and took the video and did a false color uh, analysis you could see you could make out that the shape of the tree the the bush that's in front of the tree everything to to deduce that this is actually where this video was taken was at that part so unless he had a giant fake craft behind that tree this is a legitimate video. This is actually a UFO video. This is a real UFO. So it's probably that all his pictures are probably all real of UFOs. He probably is in contact with these beings, like, or so he says. Because they can go and find where this tree is and where it matched up. And then they went and measured the distance, the zoom length on the cameras. They took the exact same camera that Carlos used. And that's another thing that... You gotta understand something. Carlos was a very poor man and didn't even have a video camera at the time. He went to Jaime Musan and explained to him that he was having contacts with UFOs and he was able to get some pictures, but he doesn't have a camera. He actually had to ask Jaime Musan to lend him a video camera so he could take these videos because otherwise he just didn't have, he doesn't have the money. So it's, it's not like, you know, he could afford to go and make some big special effects or something like that. He didn't even have a video camera. So Michael Hesseman actually took a team of investigators out to the site and did some measurements uh, 
and deduced that the craft had to be at least 30 meters across. So this was a big craft. This thing was <laughs> was no joke. Uh, you know, and you can actually do this with the with the a few just a few measurements and some simple geometry to deduce how what size this craft actually is. And this is them out there in the field actually taking their measurements and lining everything up. And they asked Carlos, you know, where was the exact position where you were when you were filming this craft? So he showed them right where they were at. They measured that length, the zoom length, the focal length, um, the uh, how the aperture was works on the camera. I mean, everything. They went over everything, all the details about it. And this is the exact spot. There's even the bush that's in front of it. And you can see that when they do the false color analysis from it. But the best part about this video is when the craft starts moving. So this is what we're going to see now. And it starts going up and down in these weird kind of like jerking fashions. This is something that's described with UFO sightings all the time. And the way they move in this real weird manner. And actually you see the tree is being affected by the UFO. Like the energy field coming off of it. But the tree is not being lit up. How come the ground and stuff isn't being lit up by the UFO? Well that's because the light from the UFO appears to be... Um, more of a laser so the light from it actually appears to be coherent light like a laser instead of incandescent light where the light just spreads out everywhere like a light bulb it's all formed together it's the wavelength all matches up with each other and it it's more like a laser that's why you're not seeing the tree be lit up by it now this is a different video here in this video the craft is actually over his house and it looks like a little star out there in the distance but as you zoom in you can see that this is actually the craft and I digitally zoomed in even more and you can still see this is the actual craft that he was filming just at a distance you can even see the little bite marks that are like taken out that go around the rim of the UFO if, if we when we zoom in right here you can actually see it little tiny little bite marks this is the actual craft from a distance over his house in Tepozlan, Mexico now this next video is probably some of the best you'll ever see because it's from the bottom up. He's looking at, he's basically laying on his back with a tripod, looking straight up at the craft. So you get to see what the entire craft looks like. You get to see real fine detail of the rim of the craft. Like he zoomed right up to it. So you can really see what it's, what the craft looks like. And what's interesting is that he believes the craft is made of a plasma, but not the plasma like when you get a super hot fire, but uh, plasma like in your cells you know the craft is like biological so the same the same plasma that's in your blood that's what the craft is made out of and it's actually connected to the occupants who are flying the craft so they're like a, a symbiotic relationship between the pilot and the UFO itself and it's so fascinating now what's really cool to see is what happens when this craft uh, powers up. I mean, you can see it start to, um, there's like little flashes of light that run throughout the craft that are real quick, real split second little flashes. But then there's like a huge power up that it does and it just totally lights up. And this is like a real misty night. So he's kind of like looking through the mist and just zooming in and out trying to, you know, it basically gets the entire craft in frame. It's so cool that this craft is made from the same plasma that's in your blood as opposed to superheated fire uh, that, you know, that it's a biological craft and that the occupants of the craft are actually beings of light as well. They can appear human and as beings of light. And now all the movements that you see are actually from the craft. They're not from him because uh, he's got the camera on a tripod. So it's perfectly still except for when he's zooming in and out. Now here's it. Look at it power up like that. Now there's other videos of UFOs that are similar when they're powering up that look just the same and it's so freaking cool that they do that, that they got these huge bursts of power that just lights up. Now what's really interesting is in Tepozlan, Mexico, there's a church that was built in 1530 and they have these, these frescoes and designs that look just like the UFO that are built into the church. And there's this fresco uh, on the ceiling where it has the same design as the UFO and it's painted in orange and red. And look at this, this looks, and it shows that it's up there with the stars. So you see that object is with the stars in the sky and it looks just like the UFO. And this was back in 1530 that this church was built. I mean, how amazing is that? It, it 
shows to me that this UFO has been seen by people from there from at least the 1500s. Uh, look, I mean, that's exactly like it. Painted in the same colors as the UFO. Now, as a side note, while Michael Hesseman and his crew was out there filming, something interesting happens. If you look, you can see this bird just straight up disappear <laughs> in the middle of the frame. I don't know if anyone noticed that, but if you did, if you didn't, go back and rewind it and watch this bird just disappear in the middle of the frame. I'm going to slow it down for you so you can see. Here comes the bird. And it's just going to disappear into nothing. Watch this. Where the hell did it go? <laughs> Where did that bird go? That's, yeah, I thought that was interesting. This place, this Temple's on Mexico, they got some crazy shit going on over there. Cause, I mean, look at this bird just straight up just disappeared into nothing. Where did it go? Next, we have some footage of a UFO that was taken over in England. And uh, this appears to be the same style of UFO, but you see the same kind of power-up as we just saw in the last video. So this style of craft has been seen apparently all over the world and all throughout time. Because here it's being seen in England and also back in Mexico in 1530. So that's interesting. Now, it all... Uh, comes down to this last video where he was out filming the moon uh just taking some video when all of a sudden he was engulfed in pure light and so he's basically inside the craft right now this is the inside of that craft uh he's in there with his camera running on the inside of this craft and it's nothing but light all around him he says it was like a warm warmish kind of light and uh, that it had no floor that he couldn't feel a floor so he felt like he was standing on nothing more like a cushion of air uh, and he's just surrounded by a light. He felt warm. He didn't feel afraid or anything like that. Uh, but he, he just it just happened out of nowhere while he was out filming. So these guys, they don't care. They'll just come and take him whenever. Um, but the next thing you know, he just, boom, the light's off. And he's inside of a cave, a giant cave in Mexico with the UFO flashing down in a distance. And it's sitting there, it's just sitting there lighting up and disappearing. And down below it is a big flat circle rock, a big flat stone rock down in the center of this cave. And a symbol is being projected onto the big flat rock, onto this flat circle stone in the middle. This, this symbol is being projected onto it. Now it's about to get even brighter and when it does you can really see what it is. This symbol is the same symbol of a crop circle that was found in England. And it's actually the same exact symbol that I have tattooed on my neck. And I didn't know that this video even existed or that this UFO made this symbol until years later when I actually came across the video. Uh, which I, when I first seen it, it was just a, a black and white drawing of it. But uh, apparently this symbol means something because that's the same, that's the same symbol that's found in the crop circle in... Uh, England as well so what are your guys' thoughts on the Carlos Diaz case is he faking this is this legit what do you guys think let me know in the comment section I'll see you guys next time UFO proof out